Hey folks, Andy Patton here. Today's episode will be discussing Gonzaga's best hype man and energy guy off the bench, Lithuanian guard Martinez Arlauskas for our season in review series. We didn't get to see much of Arlauskas on the court this year, but his energy, his friendship with Drew Tr- Timmy, excuse me, brought a lot of positivity to this team in the 21-22 season. Will he be back for a fourth year? We will discuss it all right here on the Locked On Zags podcast. Don't go away. You are Locked On Zags, your daily podcast on the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, y'all? Welcome to the Locked On Zags podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host and longtime Gonzaga podcaster, Andy Patton, here to bring you news and updates on all things Zag athletics. I also want to thank all of you who continue to make this podcast your first listen every day. I appreciate being a part of your routine. For those of you who listen on the podcast platforms or those of you who have checked out the show on YouTube, if you have not done so, but you are a listener to this show, just go to youtube.com, search Locked On Zags. You'll find the feed. You'll find all the videos. They're organized in different playlists. It's a fantastic spot to get all of the Gonzaga content that you need. We're trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. We're getting closer and closer by the day, and I know that we can continue to grow and climb even here in the off season. so I appreciate those of you who are willing to do so. All right, we are continuing our season in review episode series. I believe this is the sixth one that we have done. We've talked about many of the starters. We've done episodes on Andrew Nembhard, on Rasir Bolton. Wednesday's episode was about Drew Timmy. We've covered Caden Perry as well. Now we're talking about a guy who didn't get a lot of playing time this year, has not played a ton in his three years in a Gonzaga uniform. That is, of course, Lithuanian guard Martinez Arlauskas. Segment one, we're just looking at his season in review. Martinez initially committed to Gonzaga way back in September of 2018. He is, as we've said, out of Lithuania, the same country that produced Gonzaga star DeMontis Sabonis. Uh, It's kind of easy to forget this, but Sabonis was, or excuse me, Arlauskas was 135th ranked in his class. He was the top ranked player uh, in the country of Lithuania. So he did not come to, he's, you know, he, he plays with the walk-ons and we'll get into that a little bit more, but he came to the Gonzaga with some pedigree. He was a highly regarded international recruit out of Lithuania. He played quite a bit as a freshman. Uh, it's at least significantly more than he's played the last two seasons. Uh, he was outside the rotation still, even as a true freshman, we played in 25 games for Gonzaga. I played about five minutes per night Uh and he kind of earned this cult following a bit of a fan club because he was always seen after games working on his shot. Uh, you could tell he was really working hard to get better. There was some expectation that he would come into his second year, that 2021 season, and, and really potentially have a much bigger role. Uh, and then what happened is Andrew Nempard became eligible, and of course Jalen Suggs and Joel Iai and Corey Kispert and Aaron Cook were all kind of on that team in that rotation spot. And there just there was no room for Martinez Arlauskas to play. That team was obviously extraordinarily good and talented. Went all the way to the championship game. Arlauskas played 40 total minutes that season. He just he just did not see the floor. He was barely even playing in garbage time. It was a little mysterious as to why he didn't even come in 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 some of those obvious situations Uh, but again 17 games 40 total minutes Uh, he had two points for the entire season five boards an assist and a seal Uh, and that was kind of it for him uh, as a sophomore we kind of knew coming into his junior year a there was some some conversation about is he even going to stick around I mean his Pavel Zakharov who was also an international recruit in the same class uh, he transferred obviously he transferred out went to Cal Baptist very briefly and was off of their roster. I don't know what happened to him after that. Of course, Umar Balo also transferred another international recruit, went to Arizona where he had an extremely successful season under coach Tommy Lloyd. So there's some expectation that maybe Martinez is going to do the same thing. You know, he'll go look for an opportunity to play more because it didn't look like it was in the cards for him to play much more as a junior. And that was the case. He did not transfer. He, he chose to stay at Gonzaga. He's still uh, on the roster, still, still played, but he just, he didn't play a lot. He played more minutes 
than he did as a sophomore. This season, he played 57 minutes as opposed to 40 minutes from last year. So not a huge difference, certainly, but he did get some more game action. Uh, He also scored a lot more points. He scored two points last year in 40 minutes. This year, he scored 15 points. He also grabbed 13 rebounds, had a steal and a block. He was 5 for 11 from the field, which is pretty darn good. He was 5 for 9 from the free throw line, which is pretty not good. But again, 9 free throws is not something to really make any kind of sweeping generalization about a player. Um, he, he had a, he had a better season this year. Again, it's a, there's not a significant difference in the amount of playing time that he accrued, but he was more aggressive. He looked for his shot more. He was trying to, to do more during, uh, he didn't look like he was doing a whole lot as a sophomore. I mean, again, 40 total minutes, but we're talking about, he took four shots and took four free throws. I think his, his minutes as a sophomore were very often right at the end of the game. Like he was coming in with 90 seconds left where you only get maybe two possessions where your team even has the ball before you're just dribbling it out this year. He was more likely to come in with four or five minutes left. We actually had an opportunity to, to play some defense, to go look for his shot, to do that stuff. And again, 15 points, 13 boards, a steal and a block. That the full season numbers, those are not great, but 57 minutes is a game and a half. 15 points, 13 boards, not awful. Not awful for a game and a half worth of minutes, more like two games worth of minutes because guys don't play a full 40 unless you're Andrew Dempard. Uh, but still, a nice performance from him in the in action that we saw. He had four points, two offensive rebounds, and a steal. All of that against Pepperdine in one of Gonzaga's massive blowouts early in the WCC play when they were absolutely cooking. Uh, he had three fouls in five minutes against Santa Clara. That just jumped out at me on the box scores, not really trying to shame anybody. It's just kind of funny when you see something like that happened. Uh, and then his best performance of the season and my favorite performance of his was against Georgia State in the first round of the NCAA tournament. He came in towards the end of that game when Gonzaga had it well in hand, of course. Uh, he scored three points. He had two rebounds. Uh, it was it was awesome to see Martinez Arlauskas get an opportunity to play in an NCAA tournament game. And again, this kind of goes to to that aggressive nature that we didn't see in his sophomore year in part because he just wasn't in situations where he could even do that. Uh, but he he went out, he, he aggressively attacked the rim. He missed one shot. He got a rebound. He attacked the rim again. He got fouled. He got to the free throw line. He scored a bucket. He looked, he was playing. Like he was out there playing his best basketball, giving it to guys like, you know, he wasn't just there like waving to the crowd and taking deep threes to try to win people tacos, which there's nothing wrong with doing that. And there are players on Gonzaga's roster who are very well equipped to play that role. But Martinez, you know, he he's here on scholarship. He's here to play. And he was out there doing the best that he could and seeing the way that Drew Timmy and the rest of the bench reacted to Martinez getting a bucket in an NCAA tournament game. It was a awesome experience. I don't know what folks were able to see who were watching the game on TV because I was, I was at the game. And so I, as soon as he scored, I looked at the bench immediately and was able to see just the, the joy, the jubilation, uh, not just in Drew Timmy's eyes, although we know that those two guys are close friends, but everybody was just pumped that he was able to put points on the board in an NCAA tournament game, which is what you love to see. And I think we're going to talk a lot more in the next two segments about Martina Sarlauskas' kind of role on this team and how it's not necessarily to contribute on the basketball court, and but kind of what he does to, to energize guys and kind of bring that enthusiasm. I, I'm obviously not in practices, but I know that he has a significant role uh, as a practice player as well and really – helps make the rest of the players on this team a lot better. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit more in the second segment with our best and worst case scenarios. And then in the third segment discussing, is he going to be back? What that could look like? What are some other opportunities for him? But before we get there, let's talk about Built Bar. This is the time of the year that I've pretty much given up on all of my New Year's resolutions, but not this year. I'm sticking to my resolution to eat right thanks to Built Bar. It almost feels like it's not really a resolution because I actually enjoy eating them. Have you tried the puffs? If you haven't, you're missing out on one of Built Bar's best tasting bars. Puffs are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They're fluffy, they're marshmallowy, they're not just a protein bar, they're a treat. And they're covered in 100% real chocolate. In fact, all Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. A typical candy bar can be anywhere from two to 300 calories. Most Built Bars contain 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. They have mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, and new for this month, white chocolate cookies and cream. They are all delicious, and new flavors are coming out all the time. 
Go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. All right, segment two, still Andy Patton, still locked on Zag, still talking all things Lithuanian guard Martinez Arlauskis. In the second segment, for those of you who have been listening to the Season in Review series, you know that we go back to October of 2021 when Andy from the past was doing his best and worst case scenarios with some of the first episodes I did as the new host of the Locked On Zags podcast. And I was just going through what I thought were the best and worst case scenarios for each guy on the roster and how that would play out over the season. So I kept those notes. So we're going to look back at those notes and we're going to kind of discuss whether things did happen, didn't happen, what that means going forward. So obviously for Arlauskas, it was a little bit different because we kind of didn't expect him to have a big role. The, the first thing I listed in the best case scenarios was that he's a super high energy guy who looks less raw and the opportunities that he gets. So there's no best case scenario where he's playing 15 plus minutes per night, but it would be nice to see him look less raw and more energetic when he does play. This absolutely happened. The, 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 in my mind, this is unquestionably a true thing that happened. He was an aggressive player as a freshman, and we kind of just saw that dissipate as a sophomore. I already kind of mentioned part of that was that he really wasn't coming in until the very, very end of games. And I, I always sympathize with I sympathize with Martinez in particular because I think he's in a pretty unique situation as a non-walk-on player who plays those kinds of minutes. And this year he played a little bit more than just those kinds of minutes, but in particular as a sophomore, like when you're coming in with Matthew Lang and with Will Graves and the entire crowd, a particular at home games wants to see those guys shoot, but you're trying to like, you know, earn your scholarship and continue to, to, to play the best basketball that you can. I just, I, I sympathize. I think that's a, that's a tricky situation. And this year he was much more likely to be aggressive, to go find his shot. And I loved that. I loved seeing that. Uh, again, the difference in the box score is somewhat negligent, but I think that there was for anybody who watched the last minutes of every Gonzaga basketball game this year, you noticed a difference. You noticed a difference in the way he attacked the rim, the way he kind of carried himself, the way he played on the court. He looked more aggressive, he looked like he was trying more than I think he felt like he had the opportunity to as a sophomore. And that was to me, the best case scenario of what we could have seen from him this year. More than that, I said the best case scenario is we'd love to see him get more chances to shoot, uh, maybe play some end of half situations. So he didn't, he didn't do that. I don't remember him ever playing in the first half of a game this season. Uh, and he didn't take any threes. He went one for eight from three as a freshman has yet to take a three pointer since then. Uh, so he was much more around the rim, but again, more chances to shoot definitely happened, just not from the outside. He was just much more likely to actually go around the rim and, and try to get buckets that way. Best case scenario for Martinez Orlauskas is that he is a tenacious on-ball defender and he shows heart and hustle every minute. Unquestionable. Unquestionable. I, it's really hard to judge a player's defense when they're only playing in these kinds of situations. So I'm not going to speak to whether I think that he's necessarily an elite on ball defender, but is he a tenacious one? Yes. Is he trying hard every time he's on the floor? Absolutely. Within reason of what you're kind of socially acceptable allowed to do in these situations. Martinez wasn't going to steal the ball from somebody who's just standing there holding it because they're down 37 points in the final 45 seconds of a game. That would be, that wouldn't be tenacity. That would be just kind of being a dickhead, quite frankly. And he never did that, but he, when there, when the opportunity presented itself for him to play good defense, he did. When the opportunity presented itself for him to try to go hard to the rim or get a bucket, he did. And that's the best thing that you could ask for a player in his situation at this point in his collegiate career. The next best thing you can ask for that I listed here was great team player on the sideline is seen goofing around with Drew Timmy. Yep. And I say this with no ill intention, with no derisiveness whatsoever. This was his greatest contribution to the team, unquestionably. His friendship with Drew Timmy, his goofiness, the way that he celebrated his teammates, the way that he took those half-court shots with Drew Timmy before every game, that stuff is important. It is important. Not just to Drew Timmy, although I'm sure that it was important to him, but for team camaraderie, for team cohesion, for everything, all of that stuff. 
I'm not around the team on a day-to-day basis. There are other reporters and media members who were around this team significantly more than I was, who can probably speak to his contributions in that way more than I can. What I have seen from him is a player who celebrates his teammates, who his teammates love to be around. They love to talk to him. They love to joke around with him. I suspect that he's also really, really hardworking in practice and that he does all of that stuff right. Because if he didn't, he probably would not still be here. So those are the things that we don't, the, what we do see from Martinez Herlauskas in that regard is overwhelmingly positive. The stuff that we do not see, I'm guessing is pretty dang positive too. We just don't get a lot of glimpses of that in the situation that we're in as fans. Beyond that, I said best case scenario is there's glimpses of a guy who could contribute as a senior. Yeah, I'm not I'm not there. I'm not there with him at this point. I, I don't think that there's that the Zags are building any kind of role for him next season other than what he has continued to be uh, in his first couple of seasons in a Gonzaga uniform. Next up, worst case scenarios. Worst case scenario looks a lot like last year. He doesn't play outside of garbage time and he doesn't do much when he does play. So this didn't happen. I think that, again, he only played 17 more minutes than he did last year, which looks very small, but the type of player that he was was different. He looked more aggressive. He looked more willing to actually go out and try to to get buckets, try to play defense, do that stuff. So I don't think that this worst case scenario really happened, even if the box score numbers don't look that much different. A worst case scenario for Martinez Orlowski is they start to see glimpses of unhappiness. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. I, I never saw it. Uh, I, you know, again, the camera's not on Martinez Orlowski every minute of every game, but he looks so, and I, I don't swear on this podcast, but I rarely swear in my notes, but I will say that my notes don't say freaking, but I wrote, he seems so freaking happy to be here. He really does. He seems like he loves this place. And maybe we'll get word soon that he's transferring and maybe that'll make this look a little bit silly, but I stand by it that he seems so happy here. I've heard that from people around the program that he's just happy to be On this program, he's happy to be around these guys. He's happy to be in Spokane with, you know, part of this community, part of this family, part of this team, part of this school, whatever it may be. And and we did not see any glimpses uh, that I was able to see, at least, of him not seeming to be very happy in the spot that he's at. Worst case scenario is that he doesn't appear to have an outside shot and he's not aggressive when he has chances to be. So the outside shot is kind of just a moot point. I'm not concerned about that. Yes, it's true. He does not appear to have an outside shot, but he's taken eight threes in three years. So how can we, how could we determine anything conclusive from that? Uh, But the aggressiveness we did see, and this is why those three minutes that he played against Georgia state were so kind of heartwarming for me and important for me is that he was, he is that aggressive player, that tenacious basketball player that we kind of had heard he was coming from Lithuania that we saw in bigger glimpses as a freshman that guy is still there and for him to go out and do it in an NCAA tournament game even a game where the outcome was decided is still very 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 cool and then the last worst case scenario is that he's an obvious transfer candidate at the end of the season it's far from obvious we're going to talk more about that in the third segment obviously but I, I don't see a player who seems like he's headed out the door but let's get more into that in the third segment. Before we get there, though, let's talk about Bet Online. The 2022 NCAA tournament is in the books with the win secured by Bill Self and the Jayhawks of Kansas. While the Zags unfortunately fell short of the game's pinnacle week, that does not mean fans cannot remain in on the action. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your betting needs and sports information from the latest odds, contests, and player props, you name it. BetOnline remains the best spot for all of your latest sports developments, including podcasts and reviews for all the leagues this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games. Heck, they even have lines on a fight between Will Smith and Chris Rock, should you be so inclined to spend your money on that. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. BetOnline where the game starts. All right, segment three, still Andy Patton, still locked on Zags. Happy Friday to those of you listening on Friday or happy weekend. If you have made it into the weekend, we're talking Martina Sarlowskis in today's season in review episode. We're talking about the future for the Lithuanian guard. He just completed his third season in a Gonzaga uniform as many of his colleagues, all of his colleagues do. He does have two more years of eligibility as somebody who 
was a part of Gonzaga's program during the COVID shortened season. That means he gets an extra year of eligibility. So he is a junior, but he is ent and entering his senior year, but he could in theory stay at Gonzaga or play college basketball for two more seasons. Again, everything we've said up to this point in the first 20 or so minutes of this episode points to a player who, yeah, he's probably not going to contribute a lot next year. He has not contributed very much on the basketball court during games in his first three seasons in a Gonzaga uniform, but I do not get the impression that he is a player who is going to transfer. If he were to, if that decision was made, I'm not going to pretend that I would be shocked either. I would be a little bit surprised because that's not really the impression that we've gotten or what I've heard, but if he wanted to transfer somewhere where he would play 15, 20, 25 minutes per night, there are schools that will give him that, or at least will give him the opportunity to compete for that. He's still going to have to earn it. But if he wanted to go to a WAC school or a Big Sky school or another smaller mid-major program, they would have the ability to, he, you know, he's a 6'5 guard who spent three years of practice and some game time at Gonzaga. He was, you know, a top-rated recruit in his class. There, somebody's going to give him a shot. They'd give him a shot for sure. He'd have to earn it. And I don't, I don't think there's any pro, there's very few programs that would just promise him a, spa, a starting spot right away. We haven't seen a lot of him over the last three years for that to be something that you would guarantee. But I, I mean, it, it's not going to happen at Gonzaga. So if he wants to play more, if he wants to play 15, 20 minutes per night, he could transfer somewhere and probably compete enough to get that responsibility, to get a, that role on another team. I don't get the impression he wants to do that. I think he's very happy where he is. And that is great. That's great. It's good for Gonzaga. It's good for Martinez. It's good for everybody. It's good for everybody, except maybe, you know, the smaller big sky school who could use a player like him. It's maybe not good for them, but it's good for everybody else. And I think that it's sometimes people, and I'm not talking about anybody specifically, but sometimes there needs to be a reminder that some people are just very content with what they have. It makes sense to look at Martinez, a uh, top 140 player in his class, you know, the number one player in his country when he came to Gonzaga. It makes sense to look at what has happened to him in his playing time, which is not entirely his fault. He hasn't stepped up and earned it necessarily, but there have been a lot of really good players in front of him. It makes sense to look at that and be like, well, he he should want to go play somewhere else. And it can be a little bit perplexing to people who who maybe can't figure out why he doesn't want that. And I think it's worth remembering that there's so much more to it than this. Not just like more to basketball, although obviously, yes, it, uh, clearly he's comfortable in Spokane. He's comfortable at Gonzaga, all of that. But just like he's getting a lot out of being on this basketball team that's not specifically what he's doing on the court during games. He gets to practice with some – He's, I mean, he's how many NBA players has he gone up against in practices? T tons. Tons. He matched up against Corey Kispert probably every dang day. For years, he's seen Killian Tilly. I, he's seen Jalen Suggs. Like he's seen now Chet Holmgren and Drew Timmy and Andrew Nemhard and Rasir Bolton. And I mean, he's gone he's gone toe to toe in practices with some of the best basketball players on the planet for three years. That is awesome. He gets to travel around the country and play basketball or be on the basketball court against some of the best teams in the country. That is so cool. Like this is a great opportunity for him and. and I suspect that he came to Gonzaga expecting to play more and for a variety of reasons that has not happened, but it has not deterred him from loving this community, loving this place uh, and being a, a valuable part of the program. Again, his camaraderie, his energy jubilation, you know, whatever you want to call it has been a, has been an important part of the program. I guarantee you players in the team will tell you that I guarantee you Mark few will tell you that. And of course they're not going to speak ill because you know, that's just kind of how it is, but like they'll mean it. They'll mean it when they say that. I know that. I promise that. And that's why I think it would be a good thing for Gonzaga if Martinez stayed. I I also wouldn't blame him if he left. <laughs> I think it's 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 kind of it's kind it's almost like a win-win for for how I feel, at least personally. I'm sure other people have varying opinions here, but if he stays, great. It's good for Gonzaga. It's cool for him. Uh, he obviously loves it here, and it's just kind of heartwarming for us to know that he wants to stay and be around. But if he leaves, awesome. I can't wait to see where he goes. I can't wait to see what he does at another school in a different uniform with more playing time opportunities. It's kind of a win-win. The Drew Timmy factor is something that interests me. Drew Timmy seems 85% according to my kind of estimations out the door. I don't think Drew Timmy's coming back. Does that make it more likely that Martinez Arlauskas does pop his name in the transfer portal? Maybe. 
I'm guessing no. I'm thinking if Martinez Herlaskis was going to enter the transfer portal that he would have done it already. Uh, I believe the deadline for being able to transfer and not have to sit out a year is May 1st. I'm recording this on April 14th, so that's not a lot of time. So I'm guessing he's not transferring. I'm guessing he's sticking it out. He's going to be here for another year. He's going to play a similar role to what he did this past season. Maybe he'll get in a few more games. Maybe there will be, I mean, knock on wood, we don't want this, but maybe there will be an injury or something that creates a, an opportunity for him to play an actual role. It's hard for me to give you a good estimation on how he would do in that role because we just haven't seen him all that much, but he's here for a reason. He obviously can play basketball, so it would be interesting to see if that were to happen. But I'm excited about Martinez Sarlowskis. I've loved him from the day he came on a Gonzaga campus back in 2019. Uh, I think he's he fits so well into this culture, into this community. Uh, it's clear he's beloved by the fans and by the by his teammates and by his coaches. It's clear he loves all of them too. Uh, and I think that he's got one more, maybe two, who knows if he, if he opts to take it, uh, years of, of being on this in this program and affiliated with this university. And, and I'm excited for every minute of it. That is going to do it for me today and for this week. We're going to come back, of course, next week with Mailbag Monday. We got more of these season in review series episodes coming your way as well, right here on the Locked On Zags podcast, available wherever you get your podcasts, available on YouTube as well. Check it out there if you haven't yet. Finally, thank you again to those of you who have made Locked On Zags your first listen every day. Now is a great opportunity to make your second listen of the day, the Locked On NBA Draft podcast. With the college basketball season wrapped up, give Raphael Barlow and a flurry of guests a listen as they prepare for the NBA draft. Hear thoughts on Chet Holmgren, Paolo Bancaro, and the rest of the NBA's future stars on Locked On NBA Draft, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. All right. Thank you all for listening, and go Zags.